Well, my name is Christopher James, and I started uh, Porridge Papers a little over 20 years ago. I was working at an art store, um, trying to save money to continue going to college down here at the university, and I stumbled upon a paper making kit um, for 20 bucks, and it had a little five by seven mold and decal in it, and instructions on how to blend up paper in your blender in your kitchen. So um, I kind of started doing that. A couple months went by. And it had kind of taken over everything in my house. And I was making little stationary kits, selling them at uh, craft fairs um, and, and art fairs just around the Lincoln and Omaha area. It wasn't long and I was probably in 20 or 30 stores up and down the Midwest um, selling little stationary sets. And uh, kind of fast forward, I guess, 20 years later, um, still doing it. We're not doing little stationary sets anymore, but we're doing much larger sheets of paper. Um, but that's kind of how it got started. It was a complete accident. I was, I was going to school to be an architect. Um, but this kind of fell on my lap and it felt good. And I thought I figured I'd see how long I could last. All of the fiber that we used is sourced from an envelope converting company in Wahoo, Nebraska. Um, we buy probably about 5,000 pounds. Um, every couple months from them and it's just little scraps of paper that we uh, process back into actual fiber um, and it goes through what's called a Hollander beater which uh, is basically an oval tank um, with a, a roll that's got blades on it and so as the paper is going through mixed with water it just shreds the, the paper back into fibers. Um, an easy way to kind of explain it to people that don't understand is just take your kitchen blender, throw a bunch of paper in it, turn it on, and you know, 30 seconds later, you just got fluff kind of in the water. Um, that's, that's uh, you know, that's kind of dumbed down. But, so we put it in the holder beater. It takes about three hours um, to process all the fiber back into pulp. And then from that point, we, we add whatever it is the client wants in the paper. take that pulp and we mix it with even more water so it's kind of thinned down a little bit and that's where we start forming the sheets of paper. Um, I kind of describe it as like sifting for gold. Um, you just got a screen that you kind of dip in and you pull it up and let as much water as you can drain off and uh, then you're left with your pulp on the screen. transfer that to felt and uh, you just do that over and over and over until you get a, a large stack and then from there we goes into a press to press out as much water as we can. This is where you press all of the water that's up in here out. So we just spray the top and then the inside of that so it's easy to push in. At that point, it's somewhat manageable, so we can take and transfer that to dry felt. And uh, from that point, it goes into a drying room where uh, it takes about two days under good conditions to dry. And uh, after the two days are up, we'll peel it and um, it's ready to either be shipped off to the customer that ordered it or uh, we use it here in the store for a project. For the printing process, we, uh, once we received the artwork from the customer, uh, we would get film and, and uh, make a plate, a printing plate. 
this is a photopolymer plate, so uh, it's activated by light. So what we're going to do is put it into the developing unit. And expose it to light. Right. Um, this is the film that has the artwork in it. Okay. So anywhere that the light is able to go through is going to expose the polymer and harden it. Anywhere that's black, the light isn't going to be able to go through, and so that'll wash away. got to rinse it off and dry it. Um, after the plate's made then we uh, put that on the press and depending on what press uh, we put it on um, you know we'll average anywhere from 200 to 500 uh, impressions an hour. You can kind of figure out how long that would take based on you know what size the job is but it, it is a, a slow process. found a client in Santa Fe, New Mexico that uh, was making paper or was working with another paper maker that was making paper with seeds in it. And so that was probably the first big kind of jump that I had um, with my business was uh, instead of making little stationary sets, I actually started making uh, larger sheets of paper that were would be used for different products. Uh, and that's kind of probably at the point in the business where everything really changed from being you know, what some might consider a hobby business to a full-fledged business. Um, so we started making seeded paper embedded with uh, either wildflower seeds or herb seeds, vegetable seeds, we've done tree seeds. It's a very, very popular now. Everybody's very, you know, concerned about the environment and wants to send a green message. So people will use the plantable paper for a lot of different reasons. Um, but ultimately it just comes down to the idea that they know that what they're, they're sending out isn't hopefully going back into the landfill, but actually being turned into um, you know, a, a garden or, or a, a, you know, a plant that they can eat. Aside from that, we'll do just about any kind of paper that somebody wants. Um, you know, we'll just do regular handmade paper that some might, someone might use for an invitation. Uh, we've done paper with iridescent powder in it, um, scented paper. We've had paper that smelled like rose petals or um, sunflower petals. Uh, we did bacon scented paper for um, a cover of a notebook uh, for the Bacon Fest in Chicago. Um, we've done paper with uh, dead ants um, embedded in the fibers. Uh, kind of our motto is we'll try everything once. Um, it might be disgusting or, or just really ugly, but we'll give it a shot if that's what the, the client wants. 